Hello everybody and welcome to your next C++ Allegro 5 tutorial. So in this tutorial, um, we're not going to be making much, we're not going to be making progress. We're just going to be modifying the way we do some stuff and you guys might be disappointed in this, but it will make our lives easier in the future. So if we go to our game screen class, uh, we we send in a, a bunch of common things. We send in our input manager. We send in our attributes. We send in um contents, right? Uh, but when we go to our title screen and or let me go to my title screen at CPP and stuff. Uh, we don't. Uh, if we want to unload that data or unallocate it, then for every single thing that in inherits from the title screen or from the game screen class we're gonna have to do attributes dot clear so on and so forth right and we don't want to do that we don't want to have to do that right so what we could do is simply just go to the game screen dot cpp and then then load content or we're gonna do just do attributes dot clear contents dot clear and for the input we'll just set that equal to null if it will no it won't let us so all we have to do is just clear the attributes and the contents so now that when we go to our title screen all we have to do is call game screen unload content so we've just unloaded our attributes and our contents without having to actually type in all that so if we add in any any other protected members into the game screen class that we want to unload in, in every other class that inherits from it, then we can simply just put it in unload content here. And then every other class that inherits from the game screen class, it will unload it as well. So we gotta do the same for our splash screen. So in the unload content area, all we gotta do is say game screen unload content. And voila, that's what we got. Now, one last thing, and this is not going to be a long tutorial, so there's one last thing that we got to do, and uh, let us see, so, let's find anything that has position, let's find position, uh, let's first go, Okay, so as you can see, we have um, we set our position as a as a array of two, right? For our position, and that's fine. So we can do this if we like to, but there's another way that I like to do it, and it's really up to you if you guys want to do it this way or not, right? You can modify it um, any way you want to do it. Um, well, let's go to the animation class, animation dot h. So instead of making the position of float um with the with the value two right there what we could do is we could just do a std pair uh we'll make these floats and we'll name this position so once so to allocate something to it so let's go to our animation.cpp so instead of saying uh, position uh, zero is equal to null, so we can say position is equal to uh, or position dot first is equal to zero and position second is equal to zero. So uh, instead of just having that array, we can store that all into an std pair. Now I want to try something right now. So if I say uh, if it's equal to std pair, and I say uh, yeah, so I guess we can allocate a value like so. And let me see if they can allocate it like this no you can't really do that but uh we can allocate it like this so basically we just said that we set our position um our first position to zero and we set position dot second equal to zero so instead of having an array of two to pass into everything we can store it under one variable named composition the x will represent uh, will be position dot first and the y will be position dot second 
So it's really up to you whichever one that you um whichever one you want to refer to. So uh if we ch uh in this case instead of saying position zero and position one, we say position dot first and position dot second. So it's a little more to write. Uh, so it's really up to you which one you like to do. I prefer it this way because we have our position and stuff stored under one variable name, right? Uh, so it's easier to manage, I guess, in that way. But it's really up to you which one you want to do, whichever one floats your boat. Okay. Uh, so let's change all that. All that there. Uh. Oh, this should be equal. I I never even noticed this was in unload content. So on unload content, we don't even have to set anything. Set it to anything. We. We can keep it the way it was before. Yeah, we'll just keep it like that. And for right here in our load content, uh, we'll just set it to... Not sure why we're getting that error. Oh, because we have position in there. It should be this position. And... Instead of taking a float right here, we will take in an STD pair. And we'll call this position. Okay. So we can just say this position is equal to position. And so we're going to have to change down our load content as well. So animation.h in our load content. So STD pair. We got that set, so um, that is set. So anywhere that uses the position, um, so let's see who which uses animation. Uh, set animations. Um, so our our temp animation, so our fade animation uses that as well. So we're going to have to change this as well in our fade animation, and it's quite a bit to change, but uh, let's change it all. So we'll do SCD pair, float, float. And we have to change in our fade animation dot H as well. So we got that set. So anywhere that uses our fade animation. So notice we get an error where position is. Uh so in our menu manager as well so we got to edit this in all of our files so it's really up to you if you guys really want to support this but um i i like to do it so yeah so we got to do a pair float float and so in our load content We'll say position dot. Now here's a problem because in this one it's going to basically it's going to basically what we gotta do in this in this case what we'd have to do is in our load content we have to make another float. And we'll go down here, we'll say position counter. And then after this loop right here, we'll say this position dot first is equal to position zero, and this position dot second equal to position one. Okay, so we got our position set up. And where else does it use it? So in our set animations, we don't need this. So um, and here it takes in, we just have to put in our position. 
and if axis is equal to two, then we'll just say position dot second, and we'll say position dot first. Okay, and that should make all the changes so far. Um, if we have any, anything else that uses a position variable, then we can do that as well. Um, but that's all I'm going to do for this tutorial because it's getting kind of long. But let's just see if this actually compiles. So it doesn't compile, so we are getting some errors. So let me pause this to check to see what errors we're getting. So I forgot the semicolon here. And in the screen manager class, uh, the screen manager class also loads in a position, right? So if we go to screen manager dot h, let's go down to where the position is. Do you even have a position? Nope, not in there. Uh, so instead of doing a float position right here, we'll just say std pair float float position and we'll put zero zero. And let's run this. Hopefully we it runs fluently. So we've got another error. So we got to change this in our splash screen as well. Um, so we'll just say std pair. And if we run it, it should run smoothly. Everything is the exact same as it was before. Uh, we just go about it differently. Now you will see a bunch of warnings and stuff down there. You can ignore them. Um, or you can look into them if you want to to fix them. But uh, I would ignore them if I was you. Uh, so if you want to learn more about uh, STD pairs, I made a tutorial on it. So you can look at in the C++ Made Easy HD tutorial series. Uh, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching and bye.